So every time I use MX Linux, I come away from it more and more impressed because honestly, it's such a, it's a distribution that doesn't get a lot of credit. It gets a lot of flack because it's ranked number one on DistroWatch. It gets a lot of flack because it's just another Debian distribution. When you think about it, it doesn't get enough credit for what it actually is. And, and like I said, every time I use it, I like it more and more. And honestly, if I wasn't such a AUR guy, I would probably use MX Linux as my daily driver. It's that good. So what I thought I'd do today is instead of going through the normal distro review, which I've already done a, a, re, a, a review of this current version of MX Linux. I haven't done the AHS version, but there's nothing much there other than like more hardware support. What I thought I'd do today is go through five or six of the MX Linux specific tools that I think would be fantastic on other distros because there are some really cool custom tools that come along with MX Linux that would just be so good if they were like Linux wide, like every single Linux distribution should have these or a version of them. And I don't know why they don't, because it's obvious to me every time I use MX Linux that the, the devs behind this distro take a lot of care and they also have a very good focus on not only creating tools that help new users, but also creating tools that are really good for power users. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Six tools that I think would be great everywhere. So the first one is I'm going to start out with is going to be the only tool as far as I know that's going to look different depending on what desktop environment you install. So MX comes with XFC, KDE, and Fluxbox. And depending on which one of those desktop environments slash window managers that you install, MX Tweak is going to look different. So this is what MX Tweak looks like on Plasma. And there's not a lot here. So it's not as impressive here as it would be elsewhere. And I'll show you that in just a second. But here in Plasma, you can control where the placement of the panel is. You can enable single click right from here. You can reset to the defaults. And then you can also enable mounting of internal drives from non-root users. That's pretty much it here. But if you were to install, say, the XFC version, it would look something like this. And it gives you a lot more options. You can control the theme from this panel, you can control the compositor, the configuration options, where the panel is, several different things, right? It's really good if you're on XFCE. It's one of my favorite tools because it allows you, especially with XFCE, in traditional XFCE land, if you want to customize all this stuff, they're kind of all over the place. Now, there is a central settings manager in XFCE, but still, it just opens up another panel. So, all those separate panels appear in your menu, and they're, like I said, they're kind of all, all scattered all over the place. With MX Tweak, you can go through and take care of all that stuff from one place. It's really cool, and it's not something you really get on other distros. Like, if you want, like, a tweak tool for anything based on GNOME or GTK, you have to install it separately, and it's hacky, and it's not great. This is nothing like that. Honestly, they may want to call it something other than Tweak because it kind of gives that... For me, it has the connotation of GNOME Tweak Tool. And we all know that GNOME Tweak Tool is not officially sanctioned and it's kind of hacky. This is nothing like that. But anyways, the MX Tweak is the first tool on the list. Personally, I think every single distro should have something like this where everything is, is in one place. Now, things that run on Plasma kind of have that with the with the plasma settings but the plasma settings is so overwhelming like for new users if you're going to use plasma and you get into the settings app you're going to get lost really fast i mean it's not a bad thing necessarily because it gives you license to go through and explore things and mess things up and customize things to your heart's content and it has a lot of options and stuff but it can be very overwhelming for normal people who who are just getting into linux so, I like I said, I think every Linux distro should have something like this. This is really cool. Anyways, that is MX Tweak Tool. Okay, so this right here is my favorite tool of all the ones I'm about to show you. Now, most people don't change their Linux distro a lot. They usually, they use it until it breaks and is not fixable. And then they nuke and pave and either go to a different distro or reinstall what they had before. And... That's what most people do. They maybe do it once every couple of years if they're doing it for maintenance or they just do it when it breaks, right? For me, I do it five or six or seven times a year. And uh, it's less lately, like the last couple of years, I've found myself distro hopping less 
But when I first started using Linux, I hopped all the time, right? And I was reinstalling, I was breaking stuff all the time. A tool like this would have been really helpful. So what this is called is MX Snapshot. And what this will do is it will take everything in your root and home direct home home directories and compress them all into an ISO. So it will basically create you a bootable ISO of your current working system. And that means you can put that onto a USB drive using something like DD or Etcher or something like that. And you can go through and reinstall your Linux distribution using that ISO from a, you know, a known working position. Now, it's kind of like a backup. But also, if you say, if you, let's say you have your computer right here in front of you, you've gone through and you've customized it to your heart's content, it's exactly the way you want it, it's perfect. And you have a computer behind you, like me, and you want to recreate your perfect system that you have here on your system back there. Now, you could go through and do it the normal way, or you could use this tool, create yourself an ISO, hop on over to the standing desk behind you, and install the exact same system on this, that computer back there and you'd have two identical systems that's really cool and as far as I know this is the only tool that is comes with a distribution that does this in that way it's fantastic and I want it everywhere like I want this in every single distro I ha that's out there I would love to be able to install this on Arco and just use it it'd be so good like I, I would use it all the time so good. Okay, so that is MX Snapshot. The next one is called MX Boot Options. Now, a lot of distributions come with Grub customizers. Like Arco has a Arco Linux tweak tool that will allow you to customize Grub, and it will allow you to do a lot of stuff. So it's, this here isn't as unique as the other ones, but I still feel that this is one of those tools that every distro should have something like this because this is a power tool. This isn't something that new users are ever going to want to tweak, you know, deal with. But for power users. Especially if you have multiple partitions or multiple distros, so you're dual booting or something. And that grub menu that comes up that almost disappears almost instantaneously is always a pain in the ass because you always got to press a button and, you know, navigate through things. It, 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 if, you, if you're not quick enough, it can go away. With this tool here, you can change that. You can make the menu timeout, you know, 10 seconds or more if you want to. You can also change what the default boot option is. So if you have multiple kernels, uh, you could go through and do that here. You can change the theme. You can change the background. You can change the messages and stuff like that. It's really good if you want to go through and customize your Grub menu. Now, I'm not sure. I'm uh, They're using Grub. I was going to say, I'm not sure if they use Grub or not, or if they use System D, but it is Grub. And if you want to go through and customize Grub, this is a good way to do it if you're on MX Linux. Unfortunately, not every distribution comes with something like that. Like, it's not that you can't do this stuff in other distributions, right? Like, everything that I've shown you so far can be done in other distros. But MX comes with the tools to do those things for you that makes it a lot easier for people who don't want to go through and mess around with their Grub configuration files. So that is MX boot options. The next one is MX Clean. Now, this one here is not a unique thing at all. There's a ton of tools out there that you can download that do the same thing. So, things like Stacer, things like BleachBit, which don't use BleachBit. It's you're just going to break something using BleachBit, especially if you you know, use it using root privileges. You're just going to delete something you need. But something like this is good, and it's kind of like Stacer, but for MX. And it does a ton of stuff. So you can go through and clear your clean folders. You can clean your app cache. You can delete many of the logs that Linux constantly is creating. You can empty the trash. You can also, what's really cool, is go through and schedule this so that it does this uh, either daily, weekly, or monthly. I'm assuming what it does is it creates a cron job in the background and then it will run whatever script it's, this is a front end for in the background and do all the things that you want to be done. Uh, it also it also has a tool for analyzing disk usage, so probably a graphical front end for uh, DU or something like that that will allow you to go through and see where your biggest files are and if you can delete some of them to clear up disk space. Disk space. Disk space. Good lord, that was a hard word to say. You can also do it from other users. So if you have other users on your system you can, and you have root privileges, probably you need those, uh, you can go through and do it for other users as well. So that's really cool, and it comes pre-installed on MX. Okay, so the next one, like I said, I'm pretty sure I ended up with six, maybe even seven tools here. I'm not sure. Uh, counting was really not my priority. So this one here is really cool. Now, all the stuff here that I'm going to show you can be done in the terminal really easy, and that's how I'd usually do it, and that's probably how it would still do it in MX if I were to use MX as a daily driver. But 
if you want to create new users or add users to groups or do any of that kind of stuff, a lot of times there's not a really good GUI option for that to happen. Now, I'm not sure if things like GNOME and KDE have user management things in their settings panels. I'm sure they probably do, but you can tell how often that I use them. Like I do, anytime I needed to use it, add a user, or if I needed to add a user to a group, I just did that from the command line. With MX, they've pulled that stuff out of the settings panel, which is always buried in a, in a weird place if it even exists. And they've put it all here in one place. And usually the, if I remember right, the group, the user manager management stuff in system settings for GNOME and KDE, that's just creating new users. If you want to add thing, the if you want to add that user to certain groups, you have to do that from command line. Here in this tool, which is called MX User Manager, you can create new users. You can change passwords. So if I wanted to change the password for my Matt account, I could go through and do that. Uh, I can also go through and alter some settings, like restoring to default and changing auto login settings. Uh, I'm not sure what this copy and sync thing here, here is. I'm pretty sure that what you could do, what it's for is to go through and copy home directories into a file that you can then take to another computer. That's kind of cool. Uh, it's, if, if that's what that's for, it'd be neat because it would allow you to then do something which you do similar to the, what that ISO tool was for, but instead of taking your entire root partition as well, it would just take the home directory stuff and move it over. Um, this one here is probably the coolest part, is you can go through and create new groups, you can delete groups, you can also um, go through and manage group memberships. So for specific users, add them to the group. So if we go through and select my name here, it'll show me all the groups on the computer and the ones that my username is a member of. So if I wanted to say enable SSH, I could do so. If I wanted to add the printer one, uh, never remember what the, the printer one is. I never print anything, but you get the idea. You can go through and add things add your user to certain groups. Now, this isn't something that you'll need to do all the time. I think probably in my entire time of using Linux, I've only had to add myself to groups like five or six times, and usually it's for setting up something like Plex Media Servers or something like that, where you have to have that user in a certain group in order for things to work. So that is really cool. So that is MX User Manager. Okay, so now the last one is the nerdiest thing I've ever seen in my life. So, and it's, this here is probably the least, probably the tool that is the least useful for pro users because this is going to be for a user who is comfortable with a terminal, right? If you're comfortable with a terminal, you're going to alter your bash config in the bash RC file. That's just the way you're going to do it because you're comfortable in the terminal. That's the way you're going to find all the tutorials of how to do that kind of stuff. If you want to change your prompt, you're going to Google how to change your bash prompt and it's going to tell you to alter your a bash RC file, right? That's how everybody does it. That's how you probably should do it because that's how you're learning how to interact with bash and all this stuff. However, in typical MX fashion, they've gone through and created a GUI for you to do that. It's called bash config and it'll allow you to go through and create aliases for your bash shell. It'll allow you to create new prompts. The cool thing about this is that you can create multiple prompts, right? You can go through and create several different prompts and it'll remember them and then you can go through and switch between them. So you can get the default prompt, the fancy prompt, or a custom prompt, and then you can just add one here, right? And it kind of has a, like a prompt builder tool. So it's really, I mean, it's so good. It's kind of like, if you've ever used Power Level 10,000, which is a plugin for like ZSH and Oh My ZSH and all that stuff, they have a wizard that you can go through in the terminal and it will create your prompt for you, right? Uh, as you go through the the wizard. I mean, it's like a it's like a Windows 98 wizard. I mean, we, we call these things wizards, but that's what is basically what it is. And it's kind of like that. Only this is done in a GUI, and it's for Bash, not ZSH. And you don't have to rec have any plugins or anything. It's really, really cool. So that is that. And you can also go through and change the history length, and also add things to your path. So if you have a, like a script folder. Uh, instead of doing like what I do, I always, every time I install Linux, I go through and transfer all of my scripts from the script folder that I need into an actual path that already exists. Here, you can go through and just add your scripts folder to, as a path, as one of the system's paths, and you can do it right from this GUI. It's amazing. Okay, it's also, like I said, the nerdiest thing ever. So, that is 
those are the tools that I like the most. Now, as you can see, if we go here to the MX tools, there are a ton of different tools the MX comes with. Just a, wait, let me actually change my can here. Go to the other side. You can see there's just a ton of them that I didn't even go through and cover. That there's a network manager. There's an MX date and time for managing the date and time. There's a conky manager so you can you know control the conky that it comes with. Uh, there's a tour. There's a tweak tool. We already did the tweak tool. There's um, uh, the remaster CC. This one here is something that will allow you to. As from what I can tell, I've never used this. It will allow you to go through and actually run an ISO like through a network install. It's I don't know it's it's confusing, but it sounds cool, uh, whatever it does. So, <laughs> like, there's things here like I have no clue what they are. But and and the thing about MX Linux is that every time I use this, there's more tools, right? There's, I mean, there's more here now than there was the last time I did a review of it, and that was like f four weeks ago, like maybe maybe a month ago. But like, these guys are always creating tools, and it's awesome. I, like, I love it so much. I mean, it's just, I mean, half the stuff I have no clue what it does, and I'm going to go through and after this video and go through and find every single one of these things and just explore them because it's like candy. You like, like it's, you know, it, it's like Christmas morning because you go out, you go install MX Linux and you always find a brand new shiny toy to play with. And that's one of the reasons why I love MX Linux. Like, it's not that it's the most unique distribution ever. It's really not. It's just a, it's a, a Debian stable distro. Like there's four dozen of these things out there there's sparky there's you know just a ton of them that are re all really good to varying degrees right uh, or you could just use regular debian also good to varying degrees depending on whether or not you can find the iso the thing about mx is that you can feel the passion that the devs have for this because they go through and they they're trying a lot of times when i install a distro and i install i think why does this thing exist like this is just arch with kde slapped on top of it with a with a calamari's installer that's all it is like that's i mean create the distro you want to create but a lot of distros really don't have a reason to exist you don't you don't feel that they're putting any effort into it beyond making it installable you know it, once you've installed it you have a they're putting all the responsibility f for everything back on you like you there's no good reason for you to ever come back to this distro because you're really just making it your own afterwards. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, that's one of the reasons why a lot of people like Arch Linux because they're just building it themselves. But one of the reasons why I like Arco Linux is because Arco Linux feels like they have a vision. And their vision is to have all the window managers and all the desktop environments out there and to have the most support, you know, you could possibly have, right? MX is kind of like the like that, where you can feel that the the, the devs just have... A ton of interest in making their distro as good as possible not only for new users because a lot of these tools aren't going to be anything new users are even ever going to look at I mean there there's no, I mean by the time they get to like the ISO tool or the the boot repair tool or something like that, they've been using Linux for a while and and they're looking for tools like they're exploring you know so but not so not only for new users but also for power users that I mean things like that ISO tool thing things like the user manager, uh, you know, the job scheduler, things like that are all power user tools. It's fantastic. So it's kind of like a Debian distribution for everybody. All right. Okay, man, you can stop gushing about it now because it's it's a fantastic distribution. I'm sure that there are flaws with it. I mean, there's no perfect distribution out there. I'm sure there's things that would drive me nuts if I daily drove it. And I think that after I'm done with Fedora, I am going to use MX Linux on, a, on actual hardware for a while and see if I can't find some flaws with it because there has to be something there that I just can't stand. There has to be. So that'll be coming up next. Make sure you subscribe to see that when that eventually drops. So that is it. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below if you've used MX Linux before. If there's an MX tool that you particularly particularly like, you can leave those in the comment section below. Make sure you like the video. That really does help kind of hack the algorithm, if you will. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, let's take a moment to think of my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is Fun 2, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, I'm Tool, Steve A, Sid A, Mar Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, the BSC's Rock, and Peter A. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.